I think the relationship between VR and opioids is a really interesting one. Uh, you know, the mechanisms of opioids uh, in a lot of ways are not really well understood, right? It's been around for thousands of years, but we have some ideas about receptors and, and, and all of that, but we don't really know, right? Um, we kind of take a lot of it on faith. Uh, and there's also the fact that opioids don't actually treat anything. They change my experience of pain, uh, but I still have the pain. And a lot of people still report feeling that pain. Like you can't give them enough safe doses of narcotics to actually kill the pain. So it's always this, you know, a pain doctor is always trying to balance, you know, dosage and drugs with what this person can tolerate. So I don't, th I start out with, I think we need to be clear that drugs are not a panacea. Even if you take them, there's going to be other stuff. There's other stuff going on. Drugs do not deal with the anxiety of being sick. They don't deal with any, any of the social interactions that you have. In fact, they make social interactions more difficult. So at a lot of levels, not just the addiction problem, but at a lot of levels, drugs are underperforming for what we want them to do. So how does VR fit into this? I think VR is an adjunct to the drugs that we're taking, to, to painkillers. I would never say to somebody, stop taking your painkillers. But what I would say is, Let's try another way and let's decide once, you know, if you try VR or you try some of the, the approaches that we bring, then you can make decisions. You know, it's not, it, right now it's sort of all or nothing, right? There's not a lot of alternatives to opioids out there. We need more alternatives, non-drug alternatives to opioids. And I think that, uh, you know, VR is, is definitely one of them. It's got a lot of great science behind it. There's been, you know, close to 15 years of research, clinical studies, randomized control trials, all of this. And we have a lot of evidence. Um, we have scientific evidence that it works. Uh, we have fMRI studies and things like that. And we also have, you know, it's very obvious to a patient or a person. You give VR to a person and they know immediately whether it's working for them or not. We don't have to wait six months for a longitudinal study. And so what we see in situations like a hospital where they, they have um, you know, a drip and they can, they can choose how much morphine or whatever they're going to take, uh, that VR can reduce their reliance on, on medication. Uh, and it stands to reason. If I'm you know, in VR and I'm feeling good and I'm engaged, at least the time that I'm doing that, I'm probably not hitting the pump. So I think that we get there in steps. Where we are now is there's a complete, uh, you know, there's a national recognition that we have an opioid epidemic and the way that opioids are used and relied upon is not sustainable and it's not healthy. And it's having a lot of bad outcomes for patients. I think we can move from that using VR as an alternative, as an adjunct, and then, you know, we'll be in a better position to make those decisions. I think there's times when, you know, you have short-term pain where, where a drug can be very effective. It's just getting you through that one day or whatever. But when you talk about chronic pain, we have an aging society. How are we going to handle our aging society? Are we just going to drug them out? Um, you know, people want to stay active. They want to stay, you know, they want a, a really high quality of life. And so I think things like VR and, and using these technologies, digital technologies, are going to play uh, an increasing role in, in helping people maintain their activity, their quality of life well into, you know, much more advanced years.